Hi, everyone. My name is Kendrick, and welcome to Ian and Female. Today, I get to interview Abby. So, Abby, welcome. Thank you for having me. How's it going? Good, good. Uh, so, Abby, you got typed not too long ago, I think. And uh, what was your official typing result? Can you give us your full type? Um, F M S C T E play consume sleep last. And what did you think and how did you feel when you got your typing results back? Well, <laughs> I'm one of those little idiots that like type themselves upside down and inside out. So <laughs> when I got it back, I laughed like so hard um, just because I was like, oh, good grief, Abby. Like you, you, you were exactly what they said you were going to be. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my um, reaction, I guess. But so you since then, typed yourself as an INTJ? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, uh, I think I typed myself NITI. Um, and then, yeah, because I was with Personality Hacker before, and then, you know, just other people are the authority, right? So, um, right. so with Personality Hacker, that. they made you an INFJ, and then with OP, you are an ESFP. Uh, yeah, the, I was typed a couple of different things by Personality Hacker. Um, just the most recent one was INTJ, and I was like, okay, sure, great, wonderful. And then you were. And I just kind of went with that. Yeah. Now, now I'm not an INTJ anymore, so that's okay. And um, I remember in our our chat um, when you said you were an ESFP, you shuddered. So why did you shudder <laughs> when you said that you were an ESFP? Is there like something about ESFPs that like you're like, oh, I don't want to be an ESFP, you know? Well, ESFPs are like the cool kids that you want to be, but like you like love to hate them at the same time. That's kind of like my understanding of them you know, throughout all my years of typology studying and things like that. Um, and so there's always been a part of me that was like, oh, I wish I was an ESFP, but I'm not cool enough to be an ESFP. So like, I don't know, now it's like you are an ESFP, but you're still not cool enough to be an ESFP. So now you got like the short end of both sticks. I'm, I'm clearly thinking too much about this. Like this is just random stuff, but so, yeah. Um, do you not <laughs> cool enough because you are tribe about self? Like, you know, there's always that part of you that, you know, is like trying to serve the tribe, trying to look good for the tribe as opposed to like respecting your own confidence, I guess, or self. Yeah, absolutely. Demon DI is a very real thing. Now let's, let's start with that. So not only do you have demon FI, you also have feminine FI. So how do you, how, how does that, how do you experience that? You know? Um, the what comes up for me when I think about um, having, because both of my top functions are feminine. So it feels like, especially with the demon identity being feminine, it feels like you're on a sailboat and like the wind is just like blowing you all over the place. And you're constantly trying to grab onto something to kind of pull you back on course. Whereas I feel like somebody with like maybe masculine identity or like savior identity, savior DI would be more like a submarine where you would be like, you know, in the water and you know exactly where you're going. You have like radios and, you know, radars and stuff like that, right? So that's kind of how it comes up for me. It feels like I'm always just being wafty. Does that make sense? That's a good uh, description. Um, so do you feel like when someone tells you something about your identity, you would kind of follow what they say about you? Because, you know, you're- Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any yeah. example when that happened where someone said something and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, now I'm this, you know? Well, you know, I went through personality. Well, I went through like career counseling. They told me I was an INFJ and I was like, okay, great. I'm going to read the profile. I'm going to start becoming this person. Okay. Um, and then I went through like a different thing. I don't remember the name anymore. Um, and I was like ENTJ or something like that. And I was like, okay, great. Like, let's do that. And then I was like ENFP and INFP and ENTP and then INTJ. And each time I just, okay, like shifted over. Oh, you just went Does that makes sense. I have trouble with sentences, clearly. <laughs> all good. I mean, your blast last, so it's, it's yeah. all good. We'll talk about that later. Um, no, it's interesting that you mentioned that because um, I interviewed uh, Leon. I don't know if you know him from the, the Facebook group. He's the jumper INTJ, like same type, mm -hmm. almost the same type as, as Dave, except he's double masculine. Yeah. And even though he has savior FI, he's, he also told me that, you know, the same thing that happens to you happens to him. Like, mm. like and he's, he's easily moved his identity easily moved by the tribe, you know? So like if he hangs out with yeah. people that like, likes to do this kind of things, then he starts liking to do that kind of thing too, you know? I don't know yeah, if that's Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So um, you live in Vancouver, same city as me now, um, mm -hmm. but I think I read in your profile, you live 
in Toronto before? Yeah, I grew up in Toronto. Okay, and then you came here like for school, I guess? Is that, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I came here to do my master's program and then I just never left. Oh, I guess the weather is so much better here and stuff, so. Yeah, I mean, there were there were a lot of reasons that accompanied that, like the weather is better. And also like, I already had a lot of jobs lined up here and recertification back in Toronto and having to pack and, you know, fly. And there's just a lot of, it's just a lot of stuff. And I might as well just stay here. <laughs> It's a lot of things problem. Eh? That's funny. Yeah, all the things stuff that I have to organize. <laughs> yeah, that's real funny. That all things. Um, okay, so when you were in Toronto, did you have a different identity than when you moved to Vancouver? Would you say? And then after you finished school in Vancouver, and now you moved to Port Moody, right? That's what you said. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you have another identity when you moved to Port Moody? I definitely felt like I've changed in terms of how I identified myself from Toronto to Vancouver, just because in Toronto, you're just, you're just in Toronto. But then like, when you come to Vancouver, everybody asks you where you're from, because you have a weird accent, or like, you sound so urban. I get that a lot. Apparently, I sound really urban. And then like, um, so you become the girl that's from Toronto. And then there's like, you're, you're more interesting almost. Like you have a layer of like intrigue to you because you've been somewhere else or whatever, right? Um, but from downtown to Port Moody, the only thing that I've noticed is that I no longer have a 7-Eleven across the street. So I can no longer like at three in the morning decide I want a chili dog and, and get one. Yeah. Like that's the biggest thing that I've noticed is that has nothing to do with my identity. It's just more things problems. Yeah, like, well, that's probably good for you not having chili dog at 3 a.m. Oh no, yeah, that's that's absolutely a better direction to go in. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, you do have a, I don't know if it's urban accent, but you do sound like a professional. I think that's the best way to describe it. Like you sound like, you know, like you're a professional somewhere. Like you work in a big, tall office building, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. good. <laughs> I don't know how, so are professionals more urban then? Like I'm trying to, like the two like, together. Okay, like you're blast last, right? But you're pretty, yeah. well, you're pretty well spoken. So I think it has like <laughs> that professional, that. has that professional touch to it, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, you know, when you talk to someone, you're like, oh, this person's clearly like someone that lives in a big city, you know? It's not someone that- Oh, gotcha. Yeah, you're not like a, a farm person, you know? Like you're not, a, <laughs> you're not like a hick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's start with, let's go with your um, TE now. So we talked about your FI and it's feminine, mm -hmm. masculine TE. So what's masculine TE like for you? And it doesn't, it's in a savior state. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to explain this. Um, masculine TE is very um, direct. Um, I wouldn't, it's not, um, it's only single activated. So I feel like it's not as like hardcore as somebody else who has masculine TE, but I'm definitely very direct when it comes to communication. I will very, very quickly and very easily tell you that I think your idea is stupid um, and also poke the holes in all of your logic that tends to happen a lot um, and uh, yeah it also comes out a lot in self-deprecating humor um, so a lot of a lot of my jokes are very like punchy and to the point and you know um, even more exaggerated than that almost um, so I kind of lean on that too um, connect I guess I don't know yeah self-deprecating to yourself then like like when you oh yeah okay it's not like you being a double decider then you're like you make fun of yourself you make fun of other people and it's like it's all good you know yeah yeah and the communication for all of that is very very punchy yeah um so then would that mean, mean like when you go to a workplace or when you're you are with your friend you're pretty bossy with people you know with that masculine tea or is that something else yeah that's interesting um I wouldn't say that it's bossy, um, just because in general, I don't care about most things. Um, so unless I really do care, then I'll be like, okay, no, it's my way or the highway. You're doing it my way because you, your way is stupid. Um, but it'll come out in like little points of like, okay, you're really annoying, like saying things like that. Um, or like, um, yeah, just being really direct. I don't know how, I don't have any examples to give you. I wish I had more. Um, a more concrete picture of what that looks like. Are you confident with like making a decision for the tribe? Like saying like, this is what's going to work for you, you know, cause it's masculine TE, right? So are you pretty confident with, with doing that kind of stuff? 
Yeah, I'd say so. Um, generally, I know like if somebody asks me what they should do, I'm pretty quick with giving them here is what you should do and here is the plan and you should just follow my way um, and feeling pretty confident with that. But I think a lot of that also comes with like practice. Um, so like being an only child of Asian immigrant families, you know, when you're very young, you start taking care of the family. Um, so a lot of that has been just, um, you know, being put in that role of the person that the only person who speaks English in the family and therefore takes care of all these other things and makes all these other decisions, you know? You're not, I don't know if it's so much of a- You're not born in Canada? No, no. Oh, where are you born? Hong Kong. Oh, I thought you were like CBC or something. Or something. No, technically English is my second language. How old were you when you moved here? I want to say six, seven. Okay, you're pretty whitewashed then. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so since we're on that topic now, uh, you were trying to think of like what age you came here. So let's talk about your feminine SE, your fe feminine extrovert mm -hmm. sensing. Um, how so they correlate um, sensing with memory, right? So how good is your memory? Do you tend to forget like details and facts? Yeah, yeah, I forget um, a lot of things. Um, the things I do remember comes in um, flashes, like image flashes, a lot. Um, or I'll remember very weird details that have somehow um, I've I've kind of linked to a certain person to understand them better. Like if you. For me, how I understand a person is like, it's almost like I see them in front of me and then there are like different little components in there that um, I put chips of memory in the little drawers of their figure, so to speak. I'm not explaining this very well, am I? So <laughs> you look um, really lost. No, I'm, I'm trying sorry. to wrap my head. Okay, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. So there's a person and that person has like pockets and then yeah, yeah, yeah. it has like information about them and you have to open the pocket to kind of but then when, when you open a pocket and, and read the information, do you remember the information still after you open the pocket? If it's in the pocket, yeah. But it's like, I don't have much control about what goes into the pocket. So if I've identified it and linked it with a person or a thing, yeah. you know, and it, it's in a pocket, then I'll be able to like take it out and retain it. Right. Um, but if I'm just like taking in information because like feminine sensory is so passive, right? It's just kind of like the sailboat thing being, um, hit with information all the time. If it's not stored automatically, then I'm not going to be able to pick it back up. Is that you also being a visual? Because like the, the way you describe it was so visual, you know, like <laughs> oh, you're a visual tester. So why don't we go with that? Um, how are you as a visual learner, I guess, you know, like when you remember anything, is it purely visual, like everything in your life? Um, there it's, it's, very visual and maybe some sounds kind of like I can hear things sometimes, but mostly it's a visual. It's like kind of like I'm watching a movie, if that makes sense, or like a comic strip. And even as we're talking, um, and a lot of times when I'm working with clients, this comes up too, I'll get flashes of images that I will bring into the work um, that we're doing. Um, and if I need to remember things, like if I need to learn, learn a concept or something like that, usually I do draw it out. Um, and like remembering things like postal codes or like phone numbers or things like that, that's a very visual thing for me too. So it's almost like you take out the meaning from the numbers and you just notice the outline and the pattern of the outline. So that you bring it up in your head as, your, as an outline and then you add the meaning back in to be able to remember what the postal code is. Wow, that's that crazy. Sense. Yeah, no, no, it does, but it's it's crazy. I've never heard anyone <laughs> do it that way. So, uh, I thought most people did it that way. <laughs> well, the the thing is, you know, there's not many people that are feminine, masculine, right? Like you guys are pretty, like you guys are the rarest um, sexual modality. So, you know, it's oh yeah, yeah, like oh I didn't know that. Like double feminine is the most common, and mm -hmm. masculine, feminine, um, and then double masculine and feminine, masculine is the the least common. So you got you have like the rarest sexual modality there is. Um, Fancy. Like, like, like in the class, you know, did you talk to your type twin already, Mina? Yes, I have. I love Mina. Yeah. And how did you feel when you talked, when you spoke to her? Because you're both visual, you know, you have the exact same type, you know, obviously she's from Finland, you know, but. Yeah, no, she's great. She, um, she's a lot more self-aware and grounded than I am. I feel like I'm a lot floatier. Um, so talking to her was like really, really interesting because she was able to like articulate my experience back to me in a way that 
like made a lot more sense <laughs> than my own like ramblings and like visual stuff. But um, yeah, she's great. I love her. I, I've always felt like Canada is like an NF country, you know? So I think, you know, when you live in Canada, you become more floaty, like abstract, you know, maybe in Finland, yeah. like they're more introverted there. So I guess they had more time to like process, you know, their feelings and thoughts, you know? So mm -hmm. I would um, imagine that too. And I'm in a profession that's super NF. So right. Um, yeah, you are, you're a counselor, right? Yeah. Yeah everything's all like unicorns and roses and stuff like that but um no I'm kidding it's not unicorns and roses <laughs> <laughs> well I mean it would make sense that you know you were typed as an INFJ first and then now you and then later on you thought you were an INTJ but maybe NIFI right because it's like very like NF um what you're doing um let's go with your consume now so you have double feminine consume uh what is double feminine consume like like how do you experience that yeah, so a little bit kind of, you know, going back to the sailboat thing, right? It feels like um, the way I describe it is it feels like the world is attacking me with information. Um, things just kind of come at me and I feel obligated to like take it in and, and um, update my worldview constantly over and over again. Um, and yeah, it just doesn't feel very grounded in that sense. Um, and also if I go into, if something piques my interest and something is sent to me, um, then it's like a vortex that I feel like I have very, very little control over. Whereas I feel like if you had double masculine consume, it's more assertive and you you feel like you have more influence over the consume. Um, yeah. Your consume is on a savior state though. So, um, so it's pretty good then, you know, you, like when you absorb facts, I mean, it's, 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 it's like, it's like your your type is like a it's like a weird contradiction, you know, because yeah, we're walking contradictions. <laughs> yeah, because because I mean, first of all, you have savior consume, but it's double feminine, and you know when something's double feminine, you're more less confident about it. There is like an, a part of you that is more like tippy toey uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to doing it. Um, I have double feminine play, for example. So when I talk to people, I feel like I'm always tippy toeing around people. So. Mm -hmm. um, so because you have double feminine consume, but it's a savior state, are you still able to consume information for yourself, like things that you like, or do you have to tippy toe to like do it? Like, do you have to hide in your back in your place, you know, like when you want to consume something, you know? Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I never really thought about it like that, but there's always been a little bit of secrecy around my consume. Um, and I always um, kind of associated that with like strict parents, like when I was growing up or like, you know, you know, be afraid of being judged or whatnot. Um, but mostly that secrecy just comes from me. Like, like I don't really want to share what I'm consuming if it's something that I like. Um, I want to like hide in the corner and sit in my, you know, in the corner of my closet or something and do like, you know, like sketchy little consumes and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So that's, that's really interesting. I never thought about it like that, but I could totally see the secrecy aspect of it, especially when I'm buying things I shouldn't be buying. Like <laughs> <laughs> That makes a lot of sense actually, you know, because the consume is also, you know, acquiring new things. Right. Uh, mm. So, and then you have like feminine FI. So you're like, Oh, hope no one sees me doing this, you know? Like, Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. But then you have that feminine FI, so you're very sentimental, right? So when you get home, you're like, oh, wow, you know, it's like so special. Like, do you, do you ever mm -hmm. feel that? Yeah, 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 definitely. Until like two seconds later, my, my essay is bored with it. And I'm like, eh, oh, that's, that's horrible. <laughs> oh, are you obsessive with gathering things then because of that double, because of that savior consume? Like, would you say like you're like a shopaholic or, or, or whatnot, you know? Yeah, I'm definitely not like shopping is a, is a big problem that I'm very known for <laughs> over gathering things. Um, I wouldn't say it's like a shopaholic level, but I definitely have no issues, um, you know, going to solve issues by getting new things. Um, that's like the most exciting part and almost like a kid on Christmas day when a package comes and I'm like, Oh my God, I have to open it right away. Like, you know, whereas my parents would be more like, okay, whatever we'll deal with it later. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Um, when I was growing up, like during Christmas, I would have the only present under the tree that's not open, you know, like, Oh really? Yeah. My mother, my two sisters would have, have opened their presents already. And not only have they opened the present, they've already opened mine and they know what I got. <laughs> 
And I told them not to tell me, you know, I'm like, nope, nope, I'm going to wait till the 25th. Yeah. Open it. And I have that like self discipline not to open it, but they're like, can we tell you? It's really yeah. good. I'm like, no, no. Yeah. No clues. Aren't nothing. you consumed too? How did you manage to do that? No, I'm, I'm weird. I have demon, I have demon consume. Um, oh, really? I yeah. I have, I'm an ENFP with demon consume. It's weird. <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a little bit weird. Um, I do like to consume, but I do have self-control when I don't want to open something like, yeah. Like, okay. Like, okay. For example, like an Amazon pack package comes in, mm-hmm. I'm not going to open it right away. I'll leave it on the table. And, and like, I won't, I won't like, yeah, I won't, I won't be like, oh my, I need to open it. I need to open it. No, I don't, I don't like, I don't have that urge, you know? Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's, That's... I don't, it's weird. But, okay. But, but once I do open it, I'm, I'm different from you because for you, you're like, after like five seconds, you're like, okay, I'm bored with it. No, for me, I'm like holding it. I'm like savoring it, you know? I'm like, nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah, this is so cool. This is so awesome. And not after I, not only after I, like after I, after I savor looking at it, I go online and start researching about it, even though I, I already bought it, you know? Like, mm. yeah, it's so weird. Like, for example, I bought this new MacBook Pro. Like, I don't oh, know. Oh, the one with the touch bar? The M1, the new one that came out. Like, back oh my in- God, I was just looking at that yesterday. Do you oh, like it? Totally worth it. Like, yeah. Like, it's, it's a good buy. Uh, I love it. I, I love watching like Disney Plus in it. It's so, it looks so nice. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah. So for me, after I got it, I was still going to like YouTube and watching like reviews on it. Just, I guess, to validate that I've made the right purchase decision, but also to, like mm-hmm. to myself up that it's a good thing. But I already have it. I've already gathered it. So um, I think because of my SI, I'm more like, I don't know. There's like a sentimental. sentimental. Like, once I have something, like my, my camera I'm using right now, I'm like really attached to it, you know, yeah. um, my MacBook. Um, so w- when I interviewed uh, Lindsay, I don't know if you know her from the, cl- from the Facebook group, Lindsay Johnson. She's, a, she's also a feminine masculine, um, but INTJ, consumer mm-hmm. class. She, during our interview, she said that if her whole house burns down and she loses everything, she won't feel bad at all. Like she won't feel anything. Do right. you resonate with that? You know, like if you lose everything right today, like everything burns down in, in your place, would you like feel, how would you feel? I guess that would depend on whether or not my insurance is covering everything. <laughs> okay. Right, like if my insurance covers me to replace everything, then I would be very happy with that. I'd be like, oh, awesome. I get to like redo stuff. Does it also cover for me to take time off work to be able to like set everything up the way that I want it? And also, can I take this opportunity to like move to a different place? Because I have my eye on this other place that I really want, right? Right. But then if my insurance doesn't cover it, then it's like, I'm about to swear, but I I won't. Um, It would be like, oh my God, like what the hell, man? Like now I have to deal with this external chaos shit that I, I, crap, I swear, I swear anyway. Um, that, um, okay, sorry. Um, that like I um, now have to like spend money for that I would have, you know, used for other things. For other gathering. <laughs> yeah, like a MacBook with the M1 chip. <laughs> right, that's so funny. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I think the difference between you guys is that for you, it's another, if you lose everything, it's another opportunity to gather more things. So it's not so bad, you know? Um, and then for her, you know, because she's an INTJ, it's like, I don't care about things at all. I only live in like abstract world anyway. So things doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, that, that's that's interesting. Um, seeing it from your perspective because you're savior consume. Mm-hmm. Um, but okay, let's say your whole house or your whole place burns down, you lose everything. You do have insurance, but you have to jump through so many hoops to you know, get your money from the insurance. Um, how would that make you feel? You know, having to fill out all those forms, have to send out all those receipts. Like, have you, do you even keep your receipts? You know, uh, you know. So, like, yeah. Now you file for insurance, but you don't have any receipts. Then they're like, okay, we can only reimburse you on things that you have, like paper receipts or whatever. Right. Or, um, I would be annoyed. Definitely, but I would almost, this is gonna sound really weird, but I would almost derive a sense of satisfaction from being annoyed and being able to kick ass at like, you know, getting people to do what I need them to do. Um, Cause you know, that's been my life, right? Like firefighting, all of these things. I'm relatively good at that, getting things done when I need to get them done. And I'm pretty sure I will find a way around the receipts if I needed to, so. I see. So yeah. you, 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 you like the troubleshooting part of it. Like you kind of, yeah. 
yeah like you enjoy that like you savor it you know yeah yeah okay that's and cool. it's something that I would be like secretly proud of gotcha like okay. kicking ass at it I'd be like you can't you can't pull one over on me you know the masculine de the tribe is out to get you like <laughs> Uh, would, would you say um, it's because you are an ESFP? So, you know, the ESFP's biggest enemy is like the man, you know, or like the big corporation. So mm -hmm. like the fact that you got a one up on them, it's like, yeah, you know, I showed you, you know, the, the small guys won, you know? Kind of a little bit. Yeah, I beat the system. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you beat the system. Exactly. Yeah. How does that make you yeah. feel beating the system, you know? Yeah, it feels pretty good. It feels very liberating. Like, you know, screw you. Can't, you can't control me, bro. Can't control me. <laughs> No, that's so cool because, you know, you have NI last, right? And NI is all about systems. So I need to just obsess with systems, right? And then for you, it's like, no, I'm going to beat your damn system, you know? So it's like, yeah, yeah. okay. No, I get that a lot. When somebody like, I've noticed because I've been, I've been talking to a lot of um, NI leads. So when somebody like, um, kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, unconsciously like tries to box you into something, I'm like, screw you I'm gonna break that archetype screw you I'm gonna I'm gonna prove you wrong like you know there's like that kind of um anarchy <laughs> right. almost <laughs> okay I see your inner EP coming out now you know like <laughs> you know it's um what's it's like the joker archetype you know um you know he's like I just want to see the world burn you know it's like I'm mean, not not to that extreme of course you know but like I can see that leaking out of you like that inner like you know, I want to cause chaos. Let's go, you know, let's go mess things up, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about your sleep. Um, you have NF sleep. Um, mm -hmm. and it's a demon, but it's third. So it's not so bad. And it, it could, some people could say it's in a hobby state. So how do you experience NF sleep? Like, do you think about like abstract, you know, how to make the world a better place inside you? Like, do you think about like this kind of like big picture NF concept, um, you know, when you have time to mull over it? Yeah, so... Um... With sleep, it's more currently about like who I want to show up as as a person and what kind of impact I want to leave on the world, right? Like, you know, all the existential stuff of like, you know, I'm not going to firefight this moment. What am I working towards in the future? What kind of legacy do you want? Do I want to leave? Um, like, yeah, what change do I want to be able to um, come to? Um, and also resolving some like old, um, I think this is like an occupational hazard, but like, you know, trying to resolve some of these old patterns and old things that I've held on to just from my childhood and stuff um, and family dynamics and things like that. That's also a part of sleep. Um, and then something, you know, more surface level for sleep is like the literal, like, because I'm spending so much energy during the day, the um, like get off me vibes, right? So like when my day is done, I'm literally like, don't talk to me, don't touch me, don't like give me any new information, don't just, just get off me, you know, kind of thing. Right. So oh, there's different cool. layers to the, to the sleep. Yeah, and you have masculine TE too. So I guess like, <laughs> okay, this will sound funny, but so <laughs> I'm guessing at the start of the day, you're like super cheerful, friendly. And then at the end of the day, you have like the super resting bitch face, fuck, fuck off, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, that, that's funny. Yeah, sometimes I don't last till the end of the day. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So like you're like, lunch, of, yeah. it's already like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm already like, I can't, I can't do this. Like just get off me <laughs> well, if someone were to book a counseling session with you it's better to see you earlier in the day than later on yeah but if it's too early then i'll be grumpy because i haven't slept okay so there's like a sweet spot somewhere and there's a sweet spot like maybe like two or three like right now like i'm at my peak cheerfulness right now because the coffee has kicked in i just had lunch you know had some chocolate sugar high you know yeah i see i'm feeling good right now <laughs> usually not this cheerful <laughs> Okay, so you fluctuate a lot then. So it's like yes. you go from like grumpy, you know, and then like super cheerful and then like bitchy and then like super friendly. And then you, it like really goes fluctuate up and down, like within like a 24, like, you know, whenever you're awake, you know. Yeah. And then it, near the end, when I'm about to fall asleep, I get very whiny. I've noticed that recently. You get whiny? How, so can you talk about that? Like, how, what do you mean you get whiny? Like I'll, it's more like um, the the feminine FI starts to come out a little bit more. Yeah. And I don't know if this is a thing because um, I see it with Shan sometimes because I'm, I'm very similar to Shan, right? My type. Yes. Um, whereas when the when the FI comes out, our voice changes. It turns into like a little girl voice. <laughs> it's like. Wait, have you, you have, not noticed that? You have two voices. 
Yeah, apparently there's a there's like a very distinct shift. I think I'm telling you way too much information. I should like, you know, like hone down. I mean, no, we're trying to <laughs> learn more about your type, right? So obviously it's, it's good that you're sharing. <laughs> yeah, I, it. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. I haven't seen you do it, but you know, Shan does do it, you know, like she'll make like little like girly, small girly voices. And like when she's describing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what I mean. And it, it tends to come out more at night when I'm just about to sleep. Okay. So you talk to yourself then? Is that like, where, where oh, you? no, I talk to my friends at night before I go to bed, right? Like Marco Polo or like just voice notes to, you know. Oh, I see. I see. Um, okay. And then, okay. I see. Yeah. Um, and they're like, dude, what's wrong with you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> are you okay? Like, I'm like, mm, I'm fine. <laughs> you know, like, so you have double masculine blast, but it's fourth. So when it comes out, like, what does it look like? It must be like freaky, you know, it must be scary, you know? Yeah, it's very um, my way or the highway. And um, like, it'll come out with like, um, like a lawyer. It'll come out like a lawyer with like a whole prepared case where before I tell you to do something, I will like overload with like, okay, this is what you do and this is why, and just go do it. I'm not here for a conversation, just do it, you know, kind of thing. Um, so when I get to that state, people generally listen to me. Got it. And it, would you say it's very like INTJ like, it's like abstract when you're trying to tell them something, you know, cause it's NT blast, right? It's double masculine NT blast. So, you know, like what does it look like, you know, when you start, when you start teaching your abstract concepts to people in a double masculine state? Yeah, um, I mean, I guess it comes out the most when I'm when I'm doing my work, right? Like when I have to share that information, when I have to direct them somewhere that I need it to. Um, it does come out relatively abstract. I start pulling out a lot of different concepts and a lot of different metaphors that comes together into one TE thing, but then I will always make it more um, because I feel obligated to the sensory, right? To the step-by-step, -step, to the how does this actually track in reality? It does land back there. Um, yeah. Can you tell when you're doing an ST report versus like an NT concept, you know, lesson can you tell when you have the shift or when you're using one over the other like let's say you're you're let's say you were still in school or um i don't know like let's say you're doing a presentation right like a powerpoint presentation like do you know when you're doing like an nt blast versus like an st reporter you know um yeah like my my emotional state and the amount of effort that's needed is noticeable within me like I, I notice how much I'm struggling to try to find the words to look for it. Whereas an ST report is, it's like me talking to myself almost. So ST play is like the, one of the most confusing thing. Um, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I made a video on it like recently, but that, it's still confusing for me uh, because I don't have it. Like I have friends who are, you know, ENTJs and they're doing their ST report to me, but in a playful state. So it's really weird. Like, mm -hmm. like they'll tell me a report, but they're like, there's like a, humor in the back end of it and there's like some self-amusement too and i'm like like i don't get it like i'm so confused you know um so how do you how do you experience that st play you know in like a more like you know engaging like friends or family or other people but there's like a humor to it like what is, what's going on with that like weird combination um yeah i mean it's like it's telling the story with like a lot of the fi activated is what kind of comes up for me as you're saying that. I don't know how accurate that is, but yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's layering that interpretation on top of the the play so that you're getting that humor. And do you like to bug people for like facts? Like, you know, do you like, so you have play first, right? So do you like, you know, do you, are you always bugging people? It's like, hey, can you tell me about this? Can you tell me about this? Like, do you, do you see yourself doing that? Not about facts, more about things that um, I need to make a decision on. Uh, can you give me an example? Um, so yesterday I was um, looking at the M1 chip with the okay. MacBook. 
And so I messaged um, maybe three people about what they thought and if they can give me a good reason to buy it, even though I do not need a MacBook and my computer is fine. And, you know, and then I gave them all my reasons for why I should buy it. And then I told them to shoot them down so that I cannot buy it. And that if I lose out on $2,000, it'd be your fault. So, uh, you know. Oh, I see. okay. I see what's happening now. Okay, I get it. <laughs> okay, so from what I can tell, you really want to buy it. And really, it's illogical because you don't need yes. it, but yes. you really want it. So your FI wants it badly, and yes. and you're trying to get like validation from other people to like approve your decision so that you're not mm -hmm. being illogical when you read. Mm -hmm. But the weird thing is, you know, you're being illogical, which is weird, which mm -hmm. is weird. And um, but then you're gonna bug them. But if enough of them tells you it's a stupid decision, you're not gonna do it. But yeah. there's gonna be a lot of them that would have to tell you that. Otherwise, you really want to get it. Like even right now I'm talking to you, it looks like you do what you, you're probably gonna buy it. Like, I can just... yeah. Well, I want to, I want to, but I think I'm, I'm too obligated to the logic that I won't yeah. just because I don't need it, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they, I'm asking them to tell me not to buy it because I need them to support me in not buying it, or else I cannot resist my consume. Yeah, and you're gonna be out two grand. <laughs> like, and I'm gonna be out two grand. And it's gonna be your fault because you couldn't convince me not to do it. <laughs> gotcha. That's, that's, so, that's so contradictory. It's so funny. I know, right? It's it's it makes no sense. <laughs> so you have masculine and I, um, but it's right in the warrior bottom. So how does that how does it work? How do you how do you experience that? Like you know, I've always been fascinated with like people with NI fourth because like can you guys see it? Can you see that NI? Can you use it? You know, I have SI in the very bottom and I can use it. So I'm guessing you guys can also do it, but but it's big picture. So it's a little bit different, right? Like SI, you know, it's kind of drilled into you. Like since you're going to school at a young age and then you grow up, like you have to use SI for everything. Even if you don't have SI, mm -hmm. you know, you have to make a label, you know, you have to, you know, SI is everywhere. You have to organize your kitchen, right? So yeah. kind of like a force onto everyone. So to the point that even people who don't have SI for it can use it. But you have NI last, so how do you how do you use it? How did you learn how to use it if you do not use it? Yeah, so I think with like demon functions, especially like if it's single activated and like maybe not even that, but like with demon functions, if you think of it as like an iceberg, right? There's a tip is like, can I do the thing, right? Like for NI, that's like, can I look into the future? Can I plan into the future? Can I like, you know, see what's happening around the corner, right? And then the second layer is like, how long can I do the thing, right? And then the third layer is like, can I do the core essence of the thing? Right. So the core essence of NI, which is very different from like the behaviors of the NI, right? And then like, how much do I allow myself? The fourth layer is how much do I allow myself to rely on the core essence of the thing? And so I think with like demon and I, it's, I can do the first two fine. Like I can, I can see into the future. I predict into the future all the time. Every time I did a career shift, I was thinking 10 years ahead, but am I doing the core essence of it? Like, or even if I'm talking to like somebody who's lead and I, I can hold my ground for a little bit, but can I hang out all day? No, I get bored or I get tired or like it takes too much mental capacity. And then if I get to the third layer of, can I do the essence of it? It's like, well, the essence of NI is seeing the future as the reality right now and being able to live every day with that kind of discipline, right? I cannot do that. I, and I, I don't naturally go into understanding my patterns for myself. With NIFI demon, I don't know myself very well, right? I can't see myself at all. So can I do the essence of that, that demon function? Not very well. It takes a lot of work to be able to do that. Um, and then it's like, do I even let myself rely on that? And it's like, no, generally I don't. Generally I rely on my SE. I go and I gather more information, even though I already know this information, I won't let myself rely on it. Right. And I won't like hold myself accountable to setting up for discipline and moving forward and, you know, living in that kind of NI essence, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? From what, what I gathered from what you said, you don't use it all the time, but when you have to make a major life decision, you do tap into it. Like, you know, uh, for example, having a career change, right? You're like, you do use it. You're like, okay, can I see myself doing this 10 years from now? You know, is this something I want to do 10 years from now? So you do check on it, but it's more like a quick touch and run, you know, like, you know, it's like tag, you know, like you tag it and you run away. It's not like, you know, you're diving into it, like an NI pool and you're like, yeah. 
it's it's not like that at all. It's a quick like quick check and I'm done. You know. It's in service to my SE completely. But it's masculine and I. So, um, how does that change things for you? You know, like are you very good at remembering what you do plan for the future because it's masculine, and are you very good at like checking up on it uh, when you need to use it? Like, is it ever present? Would you say? Um, I think there's, yes, there's a piece about remembering it. And there's also like a stubbornness around my NI, uh, because it's masculine. It's like, if this is the vision that I'm envisioning for my future, there is nothing that will move it. Like if these are the criteria that of what it needs to happen. Like for example, when I was six, I decided I need to be so successful that I shut the mouths of everybody around me. Like that will never go away. Um, but the details within it, that's sort of sort of starts to move and what that looks like. I don't know if that answers your question. Kind of, it's not, it, it, you did, it, <laughs> but, but not completely. So I'm gonna go prod a little bit more. Okay, um, right away. Okay, so you said earlier that you can't use the essence of it. You can use some function of it, but not the essence of it. What exactly do you mean by you can't use the essence of it? You know? Like, um, one of the really great things about NI is the amount of discipline that you have in, in pursuing a future that you want, right? Like that is something that I do not have access to. I see, okay. Like, Got you know, seeing the future as reality, I had zero access to that. With masculine NI, people that have it, they also see their future as fixed, you know, like, when they want something, nothing else kind of matters. So do you see yourself doing that? Like the moment, the moment you do touch it and then you go do your stuff, do you have like a, like a fixed point in the future that it's kind of like it's set? Like for example, for you, um, you know, your career is in counseling. You got a, you got a master's too. Um, it's got like a fixed point. Like that's what I want to do and nothing else matters. Would you say that? that no, absolutely not. No. Okay. Okay. No, but um, it's less, it's less specific. It's less specific. Can you? Yeah. So like, if I want to be successful, I'm not talking about like what kind of career I want to have, right? It won't be like, I want to be a counselor and this is it, right? Um, it's more like, I'm going to kick ass at whatever it is I'm doing. Like it's one layer removed from that, or I'm going to make like, I'm going to be comfortable. And what does my comfortability look like? What is the criteria for comfortability? So for me, it's, this is really dumb, uh, having a fridge with two doors yeah, instead of one door. Cause I think that's so fancy. So like that, like I'll have like images of that as like, this is my success in the future. And like, this is like little anchors for that, that are unmovable, but like the specifics around how do I get there? Like, do I, am I a lawyer and I get a double door fridge or am I a counselor that gets a double door fridge? Like that doesn't really matter. Right. I see. Okay. There's a lot of things that you, yeah, you're definitely, there's, there's no way in hell you're an EJ or IP, you know, like you're, no. <laughs> you talk about things so much, right? So things, things like even your <laughs> is a fridge, you know, whatever. Um, okay. Um, I, do you, do you plan for that though? Like, for example, you said you want a fridge with two doors. Is that, is that like something that you plan for? Like when it comes to, to things in general? The things that have like fallen into my baby and I box yeah. um, have fallen there with very little control from me. It's just an idea that pops up in my head. And for some reason I get latched onto it and I, will, I just don't let it go. So, okay. So the first example you used was the fridge. Do you have any other example where like you had like this idea of something and then now you're latched onto it and now mm. you, you can't change? There's a, a community in Port Moody that when you drive when you like drive in the um cul-de-sac i want to say i don't know if that's what it's called um and the environment in there all the trees and everything it's just like beautiful like i can see it in my head right now it's beautiful and so that's where i want to be in five years i want to buy a townhouse there oh um, okay i see yeah or like I've, i i like latched on to um when i was maybe like 10 that i wanted to drive a subaru i have a subaru now Right. Like, you know, like, you're like, you, like little, little things like that. Right. Or like, I want to be somebody who can take care of my family. Right. So now I'm somebody who provides for my family. I am the sole, you know, 
person making money and doing all the things and you know whatever it is right there are little little anchors like these that i have that are in my box that just don't move oh my god that's so that's so good i like it um most ESFPs I interview don't have masculine NI, so I think uh, I think talking to you right now has given me a big insight on like how that S and I um, access works uh, for you guys at least. Because usually when I talk to INTJs, it's the opposite, right? They have like a vision, the NI comes first, right? And then they use the SE, the facts to support that that vision. Uh, essentially, you know, they'll, they'll they'll double check. For example, they want to do marketing, right? So. Um, I'll give an example that my friend told me. He's an INTJ, so he said. So Kendrick, you know, if you want to, you know, make an online course on Udemy and you want to sell like an online course, what you want to do is you, you want to go to Udemy and look up other courses that is, is similar to yours. And there's other courses that looks like yours. That's a good, that's a good indicator that this is a good thing that a course that you should make and, and sell on Udemy. So I'm like, oh, okay. So it's kind of like, yeah, you have a vision and then the SE supports it. But for you, it's the mm-hmm. opposite. You want to gather, but then you have a, you're planning on how you're going to do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And it, it kind of gets stuck. Like for example, for you, you want to live in a cul-de-sac with a townhouse with a nice trees and, and whatnot and that in perfect environment that, that you're seeking. And that's kind of like how you're planning. And then you also talk about like some other stuff, um, you know, with, with your family, how you want to be the breadwinner for your family. And, um, you know, and it's, it's all planned. It's all like, you, you did use your NI, you did plan for it, but it's like plan gathering, which is kind of odd. Um, <laughs> it works, but it's odd. Like, it, you know, <laughs> especially because there's not many um, ESFPs that have masculine NI. So it's, 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 uh, uh, it's not often I hear about it. And the, 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 the interesting thing, thing about you too, is that, you know, like ESFPs I've interviewed are usually double feminine. So you, you have a, uh, you're feminine masculine. So you have the T also. So you want to like, it's the, your parents are the best example. Like you plan in the future, how you're going to serve your family. Yes. You know, um, do they live with you by the way, or did they live in Toronto? Unfortunately, the reason why I moved to Port Moody is because um, I, I moved my family from Toronto. So my parents are a lot older than I am. It was just getting too hard to take care of them with a three hour time difference and like, you know, on the phone translating and like, you know, all that stuff. Um, so unfortunately, yes, I'm no longer living by myself. You see the bitch face starting to come in the sleep processing, like get away from me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, would you say that's hard for you as an EP, you know, because EP wants freedom, right? So there's kind of like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was something that I had to process. Like they, they've moved over relatively recently and having lived on my own for like 10 years, it was like a huge transition yeah. to being accountable to two people that in my mind are a little bit needy. <laughs> <laughs> and um I think it also doesn't help that like my mom is savior blast and I think it's double activated blast. So it gets very, very controlly in yeah. general. Um, yeah. And it's been a, it's been a journey to find out how much of that is me because I'm DE and I'm already singing the song of I'm not allowed. You're not allowing me. You're not allowing me. Yeah. How much of it is me and how much of it is really her. And so with COVID, there hasn't been, you know, it's not super necessary to figure that out, but that has been the small process that I've been working on. What kind of DE is your mom, would you say? Like like, like her blast, is it more like FE or TE? Like what TE. would you say? I live in a family of thinkers. I am the most emotionally regulated person in my family. That should say, say a lot. <laughs> oh, really? Interesting. So your dad is also TE, would you say? Or uh, T- dad is TI, definitely. TI, okay. He's DI to the max. Okay, so your dad is extremely self above tribe and your mom's the tribe yes. self, but it's blasty yes. and it's controlled. Yes. So would you say yes. your mom's IJ then? No, she's, I think she's, I'm not 100% sure, but I think she's double masculine, um, T-E-S-I, play blast or blast play. ESTJ? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. That would be tough in your situation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not fun. Okay. Um, let's talk about you being energy dominant. Um, mm-hmm. kind of talked about it, about it already earlier, but, um, you have play above sleep. So you're expending energy all day, but then you know when to hit the brakes, especially when that like resting bitch face, I guess, comes. No, I'm not saying you do, <laughs> maybe you do, I don't know. Like, no, so, I do. <laughs> um, so talk about how you experience that. You, you give some examples already earlier, but can you give me a little bit of a different example from a different context. So not not from work, you know, not not like you know you start your day, and then as the day goes by, you starting to get like grumpy, and 
you know, you don't want to talk to anyone. But like, let's say it's a weekend. Like, how does how does it play in a weekend? Um, I think you know, I don't, I don't think this is like specific to a weekend. But what I what came up when you were asking me for another example is just, um, you know feeling overly obligated to take care of things for the tribe and then feeling resentful like that's kind of the shift for me if I were to like reconceptualize it as play play being like you know codependent like to totally completely like sacrificing yourself for the tribe and then all of a sudden having a flip into being like oh like you made me do this like that resent the, that resentment piece so like for example if I wake up in the morning like the second I move out because the second I, I step out of the room because my mom is blast play and like every time she sees a human it's like oh human do this right like human do this human do that you know um I at the beginning I'd be like okay yeah I'll take care of this yeah I'll take care of that or like if they have a problem I'm like constantly the one choosing to firefight I will fix this for you is my natural state of being in the world it gets to a point where it's like screw you go fix your thing yourself like I don't want to help you anymore like that kind of flip do you do that with your parents though or do you still not do it because it's still your parents right <laughs> like I still do it but I'll, I'll be like angry about it and I'll be like I'm doing it tomorrow <laughs> you know well, like, you're like I'm not gonna do it today like well, get away from me <laughs> so it sounds like you're rebelling for like the time period and then you'll do it like, in your own terms you know yeah but you'll yeah. still do it when yeah, one thing that I have stopped doing though is this is going to be really weird, but um, remembering things for people. For some reason, people expect me to be able to remember things. And with a feminine SE lead, I can't remember shit, right? Like, so I would like frantically write everything down and like try to remember everything for everybody and like be a little like tense ball of shit. And then like, you now I've kind of been like okay like you need to write that down yourself you need to write that down yourself and like you know that's kind of more like self-preserving for me um even though it seems like a really stupid example but. that's so interesting I think that's your savior play coming in like you know absolutely you feel so obligated to do things for other people mm -hmm. uh, almost like you can't control it um you were talking about your parents telling you what to do before uh, and um you do have sleep third and sleep is also correlated with setting boundaries. So how do you set boundaries with people, you know, in, in a demon state, but third, it's not fourth, it's third. Yeah, um, that's something I'm working on. Um, I think in general, a lot of the boundaries are just set by the expression that I wear on my face. I think with masculine DE, it makes it easier to set boundaries. Um, But um, a lot of it is, if I'm going to go into the nitty gritty of it, a lot of it is like recognizing how I'm feeling in the moment. And if there's a tinge of resentfulness, then, and I'm not doing from a place of abundance and love and like, like I actually want to take care of you, then that's something that I shouldn't be doing. And like being really honest and kind about that when I'm saying it. Um, so for example, if we're going to use the remembering things, be like, you know, I, I really don't think that that's something I can do for you. Is it okay that like you do that from now on? Like I'll, I'll be, I'll be fine to remind you, you know, to do it, but I really can't take on that task right now. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know if that answers your question. Sometimes I ramble and I don't know where I'm going. It's okay. It's last, all, last. No, it's, it's, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um, Okay, so I, I interviewed an ESFP before. She was um, play blast, um, play blast consume sleep. So like the extreme ex extroverted ESFP. I think I'm talking with the right person or maybe I'm, oh no, hold on, hold on. I'm getting confused now. No, sorry, no, no, this is someone else. It's another ESFP, <laughs> not, not, the play, not the play blast one. Um, anyway, so I was uh, talking to an ESFP uh, during an interview and we were talking about setting boundaries. So I have sleep blast, which is horrible for setting boundaries. Like mm -hmm. I only started learning how to set boundaries in the last two years, I think. Because before, uh, it would get to the point where I hate you already, that, and then I don't want to see you anymore, and I burn bridges, and it's done. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so when I was interviewing that other ESFP that had sleep loss, she said that what she did was she makes sure that she talks to people that is hurting her, because she wants to get to the point. She doesn't want to get a point that 
where she has to burn bridges with a person you know mm-hmm. and I'm like oh wow that's like that's like for me that's like like a light bulb in, on top of my head you know I was like oh yeah. wow, I never thought about that because for me I'm not speaking up you know I'm just like getting to the point where the resentful built up to the point where like I hate you now you know right. off, never want to see you again you know I'm deleting you from yeah. every, deleting you from Facebook deleting you from my mm-hmm. phone, you know, block never see you again you know and yeah. I don't think that's good I think that's not not healthy you know like so I've been practicing that stressful mm-hmm. yeah and I'm like you I have double masculine as my fourth animal you have double masculine um blast right I have double masculine sleep. So when it comes to oh. it's very offensive. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, there's nothing more offensive than when it comes out, you know? So mm-hmm. uh, same thing, thing too, when I talk to my mom, I feel like I'm in a permanent double masculine sleep state, you know, yeah. like block, block, block. Cause my mom's uh, an IJ and she's like DI IJ, super controlling. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, always like permanently like shield, 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 you know, like no, no, uh, you know don't control me bro yeah <laughs> i even don't control me like don't even you, you can't say anything to me like it's mm-hmm. there's, there's a wall you know yeah <laughs> so, um now let's talk about you being uh not being info dominant so what are kind of problems have you had in your life because you were not info dominant you know you, you didn't you know and you're supposed to consume and then you're supposed to blast right or blast and then consume so either, either way it's good because if you blast and then you realize after you blast oh i'm missing some information better fix it you know uh, or consume, so you're consuming, and then you're like, okay, time to rehearse my presentation. Oh my god, I forgot some stuff. Time to, you know, because now you're when you when you're presenting now, that's when you realize you're missing some stuff, stuff, some stuff, right? So because you don't have blast, you have blast blast. Uh, when has it like, when I when have you fallen flat on your face because you know you, you didn't you didn't blast first, you know, or whatever? Um, yeah, I, that's a really good question. I don't know if I can think of any time when I've fallen flat on my face, but um, it always surprises me when I know things that I didn't know that I know, if that makes sense. It's almost like it's not real when you like consume it in, but then you're like, okay, like you're, I'm not sleep processing it. I'm not blasting it back out. So it doesn't feel like it's in reality because I, my SE can't see it. Yeah, It's like somewhere internal, like, you know, um, esoteric the mind soul land whatever it is um yeah I don't know um I I guess in terms of like not being energy dom not being info dom the blast falling flat on my face is more not communicating like not getting what I need to get out there to get my point across and then feeling misunderstood yeah talk about that then talk about like not speaking up and then feeling misunderstood later on. Yeah, like um, if I'm in a conflict or an argument with somebody, it's not so much like the burning bridges thing that that's that gets in the way. It's more like, um, it's like no matter how much I speak, I can't get you to hear me. That kind of um, dynamic, right? And then feeling like, okay, you just don't get it. You keep thinking your own thing. You keep thinking your own thing, no matter how much I speak. So I'm just going to like shut up. I'm just going to give up and I'm going to like, you know, last, last, I'm just not going to do it. And yeah. then I'm going to go do my thing. And then like, you're going to um, come, you're, you're going to maybe understand like 10 years from now. And then I'm going to be like, haha, I told you so. Right. Like that kind of um, childishness, I guess. I, yeah. Um, so then I move about life, never really being understood by people and feeling very alone. Right feeling like nobody really gets you and like that you don't belong or like, you know, all that kind of fun, you know, NF jazz. Do you think that's your responsibility though, to speak up about it though? <laughs> like, you know, to blast about it or is it the other I think person? to a certain extent, but yes, I agree. I think the other person should, you know, be a little more consuming of, of my information as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I think I, I think I underestimate how unclear I am about how I got to certain things. Um, and then when I get to that point in the conflict, all you're hearing is my conclusion because it's an NT blast, right? Right. I'm just telling you my conclusion. I'm not telling you all the work that I want to get there. Right. I see. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. No, no, it does. I'm trying to wrap my head around it. It, it does make sense. Okay. Just trying to okay. wrap my hand around it. Um, I think with anti-blast, it's also like communicating what you're 
future plan is to people. I don't know if like part of the part that where you feel misunderstood is like you do have a plan, but people don't get what you're doing. So they're kind of like judging you. I don't know if that's true or not. And then, and then like, I mean, cause you're, cause you're not using your anti-blast to, to describe it, you know? Cause I think I'm pretty sure if you did, then it would be like, oh, okay, I get what you're saying. Okay, it sounds good, you know? Yeah. So would you say it's because of that? Like not doing the anti-blast, like, cause your anti-blast has a potential to be really good. It's double masculine, right? Like it's, it's, it's gonna be like really killer if you, if you really hone it. Uh, yeah, when it when it comes out, I usually do a pretty good job, but it just doesn't come out very often. <laughs> and okay, so another thing about your personality that I find interesting is that you start off with an extroverted animal, which is play, and then suddenly you go to consume and sleep. You know, like super introversion. So talk about like you know being like extroverted at first. You know, talking to everyone, picking up everyone. You know, uh, being social like a social butterfly, being so social, and then out of nowhere, boom, you're like a like a hermit, like you, you disappear from the face of the planet. No one knows where you are and you're not talking. Mm -hmm. you know, about like when that happens to you. Yeah, well, that's that's literally it. Like you described it to a T. Um, like I'll spend one day being really, really, really social and then nobody will hear from me for months. <laughs> <laughs> it's like and, I'm and done when, now. <laughs> and then, so when, you're, when your friends start pinging you when you disappear, what, do you just ignore them until you're ready to talk to them again? Or like how does that no, I, I feel obligated, right? When they start talking to me, I, I feel obligated. Um, but like I will like drag it out. So I'll start like replying everybody like at the same time and then I'll like go to bed because I'm like, oh, that's too much. Okay, so you 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 um you batch it, you have like a system for it. Uh, yeah. It's like um you, you do the thing that you hate doing for like the, like just hardcore just do it like you with paperwork right I hate doing paperwork it's like the bane of my existence yeah. so you like spend one hour doing nothing but paperwork and then like you reward yourself after and then yeah I forget why I was bringing that up. oh it's okay it's, you just describe more things problem um, <laughs> it's, it's <all> um <laughs> talk about do you have any ni tidal waves that you've experienced my I, NI title waves come from expecting the, the worst situation is going to happen and expecting the worst of people um, and then making something a bigger deal than it has to be, if that makes sense. So making something a bigger deal than it has to be, what do you mean by that? Like, for example, with my NI, because it's so, because um, it's not a savior, because I don't have a lot of practice with it. Sometimes I pick up on patterns that are not necessarily real, and they tend to be in a more negative light. I think um, with masculine TE and masculine NI, everything's just like, the world is just scarier, yeah. um, it feels like. So I, I'll like um, almost mind read into people about what they might be thinking or what they might be planning. Um, and like, they're trying to take advantage of me. They're not respecting me. Like they're like gonna make a plan that's gonna be really stupid, like with COVID and like people or boss at work, um, they're gonna make a stupid, really stupid plan. And I'm gonna be like taken advantage of and like, we're all gonna get COVID. And then like, you know, everybody's gonna die or like, so it doesn't go that far. It usually ends up like the boss is gonna make a really stupid plan. I'm kind yeah. of adding a little comedic effect at the end, just want right. to be ST clear about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, and then I will like flip, I would kind of flip out a little bit, right? I'll start pinging off the tribe because I can't be responsible for my own emotions, right? Okay. So I'm gonna go to the reception and I'm gonna go to my coworker and I'm gonna be like, oh my God, this is gonna happen. Oh my God, they're gonna do this. Like we have to take a stand. We can't let this happen. We need to set up systems ourselves and we need to fight back and we need to stand our ground. And like, it ends up that the boss wasn't gonna do any of that. So like, you're the one who said all that stuff? Yeah. I came up with this whole scenario in my head that freaked myself out. And the boss was like, yeah, I mean, we could do that. But also like, you know, what do you guys want to do? Like, he's very like, don't, like, I don't really care. You do whatever you do kind of person, right? Um, it, it sounds to me yeah. like you're having <laughs> your big things problem crisis. And then maybe you're talking to your boss who might be an EJ or IP and then looks at you and you're like, that's not a problem. You're crazy, you know? Like, you know, like, what are you talking about? Anyways, yeah. look at that coworker. That, what, a, what an asshole, you know? Like, they, they have, yeah. You have people problems, right? You're like, what? No, that's not a problem. You know, like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I, I, it's also funny the way you describe what you just described is because that's something like a, an INTJ would do. It's like be a fear monger, you know? 
Um, <laughs> like I'm, I'm a big sucker for that kind of stuff too. Like, I don't know. I don't even know how I found find all these INTJs, but I've subscribed to like a few emails of like INTJs and I'll get emails and they're all fear mongering emails to the point where like, this is too much. You're, this person just batshit crazy. You know, I don't want to mm-hmm. read this anymore. You know, like they'll yeah. always talk to things about like, you know, the world's going to end, you know, the government's out to get you. You need to have a plan B, get out of the country, get out of USA, get out of Canada because, you know, the government's going to screw you over, you know? And I'm like, is that, is that any, is there any facts behind this? You know, like, yeah. is, or is this person just fear mongering about like the future because they didn't research the facts? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Talk about being a tester. So we talked about visual earlier, but you didn't talk about being a tester. So what do you do as a tester? Like, do you like to try different food? Do you like to experiment with like different things? You know, like what, how do you use your tester? Yeah, I mean, if, if that's the definition for it, I actually have no idea what that means. Like tester, I don't know like um, what constitutes as like the double feminine thing, but if it's more experimentation, then definitely like with food, with um, buying things usually, um, I have to t- take things into my space for me to know if it works. Like I can visualize it and I can use my NI and envision, you know, what it would look like, but until it's really there, I'm not going to be able to feel out the vibe of it and whether or not like I like it in my space. Um, that's kind of what comes up. But to be honest, I don't really know what tester is. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, from, from my experience, a lot of people who have tester, they like to try different things out a lot you know like for se people for example you guys like to try different food like you're very mm-hmm. open to trying different cuisines you know mm-hmm. what people with si might be like nope i'm gonna eat the same thing over and over again you know like for me i have si right like if i eat japanese food i eat the same thing i order the exact same food all the time really yeah like for example like i live in richmond and i like to go to this japanese place under superstore called fukuruku express i've been going there for the last 10 years ordering the exact same food which is boxy and it's like mm-hmm. you know it has like the tempura has like the rice with the chicken teriyaki some vegetables and salmon sushi and whatnot and i've been ordering the exact same food for the last 10 years that the people there know me already so when i call to make an order they know me already they don't even give me any details already they don't say okay pick it up by in 15 minutes you know give me your phone number no none of that stuff yeah like sometimes i even when i order they, they just say yeah, yeah, we know what you want, boxy, no dressing on a salad, prawn and yam, okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool, <laughs> you know? So yeah. So so that's the opposite of being a tester, like ordering the same stuff. Like my other friends who are SI, the same thing, right? They, or, they eat the same thing for the last 10 years. It's the same, everything's the same and that's how they like it. And that goes for exercise too, right? With, with, uh, mass, with, with SE versus SI, where with me, with SI, I like to do the exact same exercise when I work out. I don't like to try different workouts. So- what about you? Talk about being a tester first, you know, experimenting different food or just different stuff in general. Mm-hmm. And also with exercise, do you like to try different movements or do you like to do the same one over and over again? Um, so with the tester experimentation kind of thing, I think my experimentation comes a lot from how I want to show up in the world, like who I am as a person, what kind of vibe I'm giving off in a certain moment. Um, that's something that I test consistently that I'm changing all the time. Um, with foods, yeah, like, I mean, I wanna try new stuff, but it's not like a, like a, oh my God, I have to, like, you know, kind of thing. If new thing comes my way, then that's great. Um, if not, I don't really have that make big of a struggle with like, you know, routinely having the same sensory, you know, input, whatever that is, right? Um, even like struggling, not even struggling with like, um, I know some um, EP friends that like to try a lot of different careers and a lot of different like, you know, schedulings in their day and things like that. Um, I don't really have that either. I think mine is more like me, like testing me, changing who I am and experimenting it with that. What, what What are you changing in you? Like the way you look or like the way you act? Like what are you, what are you experimenting with? It's like, I'm experimenting with the way I internally feel about myself and the vibe, like the, I don't know how to explain this. This is so esoteric. Um, My settledness within my body and how that changes the way that I present. And then also as well, like how that interacts, like changes the way that I interact with people um, and what comes of that interaction. 
if that makes sense. So do you do that as like a self-amusement thing to see how people would react when you change something? Or is it more like, like because you want to be perceived a certain way, what, what is it? Or is it like a combination of both? I think it's more of a self-improvement kind of thing. Like trying to see where I can get to like, like if you think on a spectrum of like, this is who I am now and I don't like it. And this is the ideal, the ideal self is somewhere within here. You can like overdo it, right? Like you can go from one end to another really, really quickly. And you're trying to find where the middle ground is or where you want to land. And that shifts with all this other information coming in and all these new things that you learn about yourself. Right. And so it's kind of like constantly trying to get to that middle point of like, um, I'm seeing a, a bar graph, like, or uh, those um, T charts. I don't know what's the thing with the X axis and the Y axis that you learn in math. I, I and then like you're like, trying to find the middle point. Okay, okay. I, I thought you were talking about something else, you know, cause like, you know, they have those oh, graphs. Oh, sorry. You know, you know, they have those graphs where the, it's like, you know, l- let's say it's food, right? Or restaurants, like best delicious food, best service. And then here's like worst service. Worst, and then there's like a, and then there's you, you're somewhere in that like axis. Is that what you're trying to describe? Or? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's oh. that's exactly it. Thank you. I appreciate that support with the blast. <laughs> that's exactly it, right? And so it's like that, but like I'm doing it for my personality and who I am yeah. internally, the essence of me, right? And I'm trying to like navigate myself to find that middle point of where I want to be. Okay. Does that I, make sense? I, yeah, it does. <laughs> I, I just thought. <laughs> no, because you you went all NF there for a second, right? Did I? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I have NF consume, right? So I think I, I felt, I've always felt like I have a, like an NF translator. So when people are talking NF stuff, like I know, I know what you're saying. You can pick up on it. That's really good. That's very helpful. Cause I have no idea what I'm saying. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I mean, I got it. Like, you know, that graph that you're describing, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. No, I, I, I think, I, I think I'm just guessing, you know, and, and it's all guessing, right? So I'm just guessing this yeah. is it. And, um, okay, cool. Looks like my NF consume work. Um, but and, and yeah, it, it's very good. So because you're a feminine FI, you can change that part in you to, to have the right vibe that would get you the best result for yourself. And, and, but does it stick though, once you find that right, you know, thing, because you're a feminine FI, right? So does it stick or does it go away and you forget about it? And now you're back to square one again, trying to do that thing that you were doing. Yeah, that's exactly it. So I find it like for like maybe a day or two you know, let's say if we were going to put a concrete timeline on it and then it'll start to shift again. Right. And so I would always have to pull the sails back yeah. to like where I wanted to be. And sometimes like, I don't know, maybe like in the time that I wasn't pulling the sails, the Pacific wind has blown me all the way to like, you know, the fourth quadrant. And so I have to like find my way back to where I was before kind of thing. Um, and so it takes a lot of time and energy. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> I, I like how you're so ST clear with, when you describe things like- Am I? Yay. No, because like when you describe where you were being blown away, like you were very specific, like I was blown by the Pacific winds, you know, it's like, <laughs> there's no, no room for interpretation. There's no room for guesswork. It's like, it's very specific, you know, Pacific- It's not the Atlantic wind. wind. It's the Pacific wind. Yeah, the Pacific, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very specific. Um, I'm just thinking, so you said that your, from, from what I'm getting right now, it feels like you want to be a certain way, but it's kind of like your true self wants to, wants to pull you back to your true self again, but you kind of like, maybe there's a part of you that rejects that true self, or maybe you don't want to be that part of you anymore. You either want to kill that part of you or something, and then you want to go to here, but it's like a never ending, like, no matter how much you go towards that sweet spot that you're trying to aim for, you're always getting pulled back no matter what. And has it ever gone back to the start or is there like, you know, a positive improvement, you know? Yeah. So the way I kind of see it is like, it's, it's like a, an evil twin. Okay. Right. Like if you think like Freud, like the it ego and super ego and that how there's like, you know, one person that's just basic base instincts and one, you know, anyway I'm not going to go super into it but like it's the evil twin has more power because it's more fun right like it's more fun to satisfy your baser instincts 
It's always yeah. more fun. And yeah. so it's easier to go into that path. So the evil twin will kind of take over, right? Yeah. And so like in order to be the good twin, to like affect good change in the world and be the person that you want to be, you kind of have to like consistently fight the justice, you know, fight fight with justice, so to speak. So like every single anime, you know, show that you've ever watched or like, you know, all the Batman Marvel movies, it's like that, but like playing over and over again within myself constantly at once. I feel like you can only beat the evil twin when something really traumatic happens in your life. You know, I don't, it's, it's really hard to beat it when you are comfortable, I think. Like, mm-hmm. like, I, like I, I'll give an example. Like for me, you know, I noticed that when I think the clearest and I'm more produ- most productive and I feel the best is when I'm eating healthy, right? So I'll go on a one week binge when I eat like all healthy food and like I become like a, nutrition food snob you're like oh <laughs> you're eating that you know that has gluten right you know like you know i become like a snob right Ooh, yeah and a week later i'm eating that same stuff that i was just you know demonizing right and mm-hmm. I feel like crap i gain weight you know and then i just mm-hmm. feel horrible um because i went you know too deep into that one side i didn't like do it gradually i just went yeah. and then the other side pulled me back which is hor- like awful right yeah. but I, I do remember there are times in my life where I was burned so bad by some like just life circumstance that I actually killed that evil twin and something changed. But, oh. but I felt like it couldn't have happened unless something really bad has happened to me. Yeah. So I don't know if you resonate with that, but that seems to be the way to kill the evil twin. I think um, there's definitely a lot of truth in that. I think if your world is conducive to the evil twin, and there's nothing pushing you to choose the side of good, who would choose the side of good, right? Like there has to be something that motivates you to start questioning the default of the evil twin. Um, But I think really it's about like something that clicks in you that makes you choose to forego the evil twin, to even like accept the quest, so to speak, if we're talking about like Zelda or whatever, right? Like Zelda games of like, um, you know, (laughs) I'm going to accept this quest and I'm going to go and I'm going to finish it. And like any amount of like hardship in your life has the potential to do that, but you have to meet it halfway, right? You have to be like, okay, I'm taking this quest because of this thing that has happened in my life. And that point varies for different things for different people. So really the, the flight flip um, factor is your choice in it and not necessarily the bad thing that has happened that's more conducive, like the, the conductor for the electricity for the light switch to turn on. Does that make sense? Kind of. <laughs> kind Sorry. Of. Totally. <laughs> I think I got lost after the Zelda. The Zelda. <laughs> I, I uh, yeah, I, uh, sorry. No, no, it's okay. It's Chaotically okay. pulled too many things in. What's that? No, it, the weird thing about you is you're using a lot of N concepts. So even though you're like S dominant, which you are, you're SD clear, Mm-hmm. I don't know where you'll bring up all this like end concepts. I'm like, what, where did this come from? You know, like, you know, so it's kind yeah. of, it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. I actually talked to Shan about this a little bit, right. Um, about how um, visuals actually tend to use more metaphors. So what's happening for me when I'm doing that is I'm just describing to you what I'm seeing in my head. So as I'm talking, I get a picture of the Zelda quest. Yeah. And so I'm telling you about the Zelda quest or I'm getting a picture of a light switch and I'm telling you about the light switch. So oh, I'm describing the ST of the thing that popped up in my head. I see. Okay. So it is ST, but it's like in picture form. That's why it's uh. okay. Okay. I get it. Okay. Yeah. That makes more sense now. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to ask you a few, um, few more questions and then we'll wrap up the interview. Okay. Uh, th- so the first one is what do you think you need to do for yourself to work on that NI better? so that you don't get as much, I guess, NI tidal waves in your life. How can you practice, or maybe maybe that's not the right question. Maybe the right question is, how can you work on your NT blast so that you feel heard and you, know, you don't feel resentful to other people for not hearing you out? Yeah, also like with the tidal wave stuff, it's um, about tracking the data in, the, in reality. Uh, how many times my predictions are actually way off and I didn't need to make it as big as it is so that I can convince myself when I have those thoughts that this is not real. 
and I can, you know, let that go. And then in terms of working on uh, anti-blast, it's about like, stop gathering, <laughs> go into, go into sleep a little bit more, reorganize the information that I've already known. Um, for example, with like, you know, uh, with my profession, you have to do a lot of courses, you have to continually do personal development, uh, professional development courses and things like that. So reorganizing in what I already know in something that um, has an impact for the world. Um, and uh, one thing that I'm actually doing this year is everything I'm consuming will be for the purpose of blast. And if it's not for the purpose of blast, I'm not allowed to consume it. Um, so, which is why I'm not gonna buy that MacBook because I don't need it to blast. <laughs> I don't know if you just say that right now or tomorrow is going to change what end well now now I've told you now it's real and out in the world and okay. I, I can't do it without feeling super guilty and super sneaky so that's good <laughs> okay fair enough um I lost my I forgot my question now I had a question for you sorry that was super important oh I hate when that happens yeah me too my <laughs> my memory is getting worse uh <laughs> I had a question about your, oh, I, I remember now. So how do you organize your concepts after you finish gathering the facts? How do you organize it into a concept? How do you do your organizing? Like physically in reality or mentally in my head? Mentally in your head, because it's N, it's NI, right? So it's, it's, it's abstract. So how do you, how do you organize your concept? Um, it has to go through something physical for me to be able to organize it in my head. So I have to like, like write, write it down and reorganize it in, in front of me. And it usually comes in a form of a visual thing. And then I remember the visual thing. Um, other than that, it's kind of, I would imagine it more like a web of stuff, if that makes sense. Like if I was to envision like my understanding of myself and my theories and my work all in one, what comes up is like a spider web with like nodes in it. That's one thing connected to another, connected to another, and then seeing where those nodes overlap. Oh, no, no yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you look very confused. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm picturing. <laughs> no, okay, okay, here's the deal though. So I'm not visual, I'm, I'm, I'm audio kinesthetic, right? Mm -hmm. I cannot picture it. I have, I can't picture things, you know? <laughs> so for that me, like, no, no, it, no, it's okay. No, no. Like what you're doing, I'm trying to like picture it. So it's for me, it's like a, it's like an exercise mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. visualizing because I suck at visualizing. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to picture the, the, the web that you're, with the nodes that you're explaining right now. Um, do you play uh, Xenoblade Chronicles? No, I haven't played that one. Or, um... I didn't know you're a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's part of my consume that I'm not allowed to do anymore. <laughs> There's no blasting involved in gaming. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, oh, yeah. What other games did you that you can use as an example? Um, Final Fantasy X. Okay, ten. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, have you played that one? You know the yeah. skills tree that they yeah. use. Yeah. You're like where you like. Yeah, you can jump yeah. to different ones, and then you have to like activate the nodes. That's what it looks like. Okay, I see. Yeah. And so instead of that, you know how like with, with um, X, there's like, um, there's like, I think six characters or something, right? And they're all connected on that map and they kind of expand out. It's almost like a map of the world, but with the characters and what skills that they can unlock. So instead of it being like all, um, all spread out and flat, they kind of overlap. There's a third dimension to it. So okay. like maybe like Yuri is here and then like what whatever Titus, I think it was his name, the yeah. blonde guy, like it's kind of like overlapping, but then like on top of each other. And then like the the weird mage person is down here, like it overlaps. There's a 3D dimension to it. Okay. Um, and so the concepts of like if we were going back to the original question and not diving too far away, but it would be um each concept is kind of placed in the map. And so you're able to see kind of where where the um where there's interconnections between the two things where they overlap so like for example polyvagal theory is very similar to something that's involved in emdr and so they might not be on the same map because they each have nodes coming out of them but then like they're all like layered on top of each other because they're similarities and they share nodes 
I feel like my brain's gonna explode. Um, no, no, <laughs> no, no. So I think this is the best explanation of NI I've heard actually. Uh, oh, really? No, no, because, because, you know, if I talk to an INTJ, for example, or INFJ, mm -hmm. to, to them, it's so automatic that they can't even describe it, you know? Mm -hmm. But because yours is fourth, like the fact that you're mapping this in a three dimensional thing, using nodes and using the nodes to kind of find a pattern in a three dimensional realm. And it looks something like, you know, the Final Fantasy X skills map tree, you know, something like that. Um, it's like, I'm like, so that's what NI is, you know, like now that you're, you're describing it and I can't wrap my head around it because I don't have NI, I have NE, right? So mm -hmm. like, I can gather what you just said, but I cannot construct that thing. That, that, right. that's, that skills tree that you described in three dimension, I cannot construct it. I can only get right. it. So, yeah. so I, I get now what you're trying to say. Um, so are you using- What would yours look like? Sorry. What's that? Like, what would NE look like? Okay, like for you, you, you know, you have like those nodes, right? And I'm guessing the mm -hmm. node inside is the SE that you gathered, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. So for, N, for NE, okay. After you've spent, I don't know, years putting together the skill tree, I'm gonna go there and just take it from you and and disrespect disrespect it. Because asshole. No, I'm kidding. No, no, because, no, because, like, I don't realize how much time it that it took you to put it together, you know? Mm -hmm. Um I not because you know, and I's personal, right? Yeah. Would you say your ideas are personal? Absolutely. Yeah. So for me, ideas are not personal at all, right? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. whatever, you know. Because I, I, don't, I don't think about the time that you put into organizing it, like the way that you mm -hmm. just describe it, right? So I, I'm actually going to take your idea and someone else's idea. You know, I'm, I'm going to take a bunch of NIs and just like merge it together in like one messy, like <laughs> clump. Yeah, that, right. that's right. But the, the good thing about NE though, is that when you're building this node, it's a skill tree, right? I can kind of see where the pitfall is in that con construct that you, you built. Because I can be like, okay, well, yeah, I see this, but this will topple your thing. Let, let's say your, mm -hmm. your let's say your skill tree is a Jenga block. I'm like, this is gonna knock your Jenga block, you know, you know. Mm -hmm. So I I know what I know the dangers that your construct has. Yeah. It's like for example, when I when I met Dave in person, and I was like, you know, we I had an interview. I don't know if you saw the interview when I, I was I was in his car. Um, that's yeah. so cool i'm gonna go watch that after <laughs> yeah, yeah i interviewed him i was like in his like the back i was in the back of his car we were outside like chick-fil-a in seattle <laughs> and um he said that he always liked having an enfp partner in his old businesses because the enfp is a scanner so he has like his construct right and the enfp kind of like looks like okay this is gonna come it's gonna screw you over this is gonna come it's gonna screw you over so it's like one like can see like I guess the missile is gonna come and hit you, you know, so you can like, mm -hmm. like operate your vehicle and like dodge it, you know. So that, that's that's yeah. what is. I can see the future like you can, but for me, I can see the chaos that's coming from the future. I'm not building yeah. a concept, I'm not building a construct, I'm protecting the construct. I don't know. Yeah. That. Yeah, that makes sense. That seems like a much more better way to go. No, but I can't build anything though. That's the problem. Like I, I, well, you can build the structural, you know, SI ship. Yeah, I guess you guess so. Yeah, I guess I, guess I could. Yeah. <laughs> I will. Yeah, you will. You got this. Will. You can do yeah. it. All right. Um, last question for you is, what advice can you give to other ESFPs that wants to work under NI? Because a lot of ESFPs, they either don't have access to their NI or it's not masculine like yours. Because you can see yours so vividly. Like, you didn't even know that you could see it, which I thought was kind of weird, like funny. Like that, that interview. Yeah, really. I, I don't think yeah, that, I always feel like it's a blind spot. I, I'm like, I don't know what I'm missing there. So I, I assume there's missing information. No, but I felt like you didn't even know what you were describing earlier. Like, like you were describing NI, but I don't think you knew you were describing NI. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but now you know, obviously. Like, yeah. So um, now that you know what you know, um, what advice can you give to other ESFPs to work under NI so that they can get less tidal waves, they can plan better for the future? and they have, you know, they're, they're gonna get controlled less by the system. Oh, I don't know how to frame this in a way that's not like particularly for my stack. I would say leaning into sleep processing is really helpful um, in order to be What's able that, to- What do you mean not for your stack? Like my function stack, or my, not my function stack, my animal stack. 
Oh, okay, 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 got it. Got Sorry. It. I didn't, I didn't, see, last, last, I didn't give you all the information that's necessary. <laughs> now I'm going to talk context. <laughs> what call it? Okay, animal stack, okay. Yeah, animal stack. Because um, I want to say, like, you know, go talk to other people. Be very, like, open with other people to share your insecurities and stuff. I think, especially for, like, SETE, it's very scary to do that, to be vulnerable in that way. But when you talk to other people, they're able to see things that you can't see. And if you ping off enough tribe members... Play, um, you're, you start to be able to consume all the patterns and be able to know them within yourself so that you can build onto that, like, you know, what your specific reoccurring tidal wave looks like. And you can build an ST strategy to get yourself away from that. Right. Um, and then in terms of like understanding and things like that, it's just instead of copying down information word for word, which I used to do, like I want to get it exactly sensory specific, the way you said it is how I want to write it down, reword it yourself and come to a new understanding within yourself to own the actual concept rather than the sensory words. Got it. That seems hard for sensory deed to do that. Like. Yeah, I mean, it's not natural, right? It's not my default, definitely. Um, but it's almost as if I think I don't know. If, I don't know if it's e just easier for me because I see everything in pictures. So automatically it goes through some kind of filter anyway, so I can regurgitate it in different sensory words. Um, but I don't I don't think it's impossible. Um, Take it in as if you would need to teach it without being on, um, without regurgitation. So like um, something that I got from Heather in the group from one of her interviews is like how she developed BLAST was to write one word onto a cue card and then all the information on the back of it. And then with that one word, you're supposed to get everything, you know, that's on the back of the cue card. So almost doing something like that so that you have one sensory thing that ignites a whole bunch of stuff in your brain that will have to come out in something that's not sensory because you are not allowing yourself to rely on the sensory. So do you resonate with Jocko Willing's message, discipline equals freedom? Because he, he is a S-E-T-E, right? And that's his N-I that he discovered, you know? Yeah, I haven't actually watched him. Shan told me to, I haven't yet, but um, yeah, discipline equals freedom. Yeah, absolutely. So that's this NI. Do you have something like that? Like discipline equals freedom? Like something like, like that you came up, that you owned that after you spent all these years gathering the facts? Um, well, it's still very early in the process for me to use my patterns for myself. Okay. I can probably tell you what I can, like what the pattern is for my clients. Um, but I haven't been uh, sleep processing myself enough to have this like nugget to share. Yeah, no worries. It's all good. All right, Abby, thanks for doing this interview. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Nice talking to you. All right. So bye, everyone, and bye to Abby. <laughs>